Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Notley video for the 17th of June here in 2021, and we're going to make sense of a confusing day. Where do we start? Number one, we're after the Fed. So the Fed announcement policy, they didn't do anything with rates or tapering, but they did offer some forward guidance and also talked about the future and made the ever so famous statement, no one knows where the economy is going to be in two years. We don't, but we have to put trades, we have to manage our risk, and we do that on the short-term basis. What made today confusing is it had enough for everybody. If you had a bullish bias, let's actually start there. So for those of you who were bullish, or the trades you had were bullish today, the NASDAQ made new all-time highs, and that was spurred by some of the leading stocks, which include NVIDIA, which is up about 5% today, we had PayPal, Amazon, Tesla, these are large market cap names, Microsoft, Apple, Netflix, and others, including Google, which made its own new 52, well, G-O-O-G did, but G-O-O-G-L, a little bit different, but did, I would just say made new highs. That's the bull case. And we see that the XLK was up about 1%, but let's flip that perspective and talk about all these stocks making new highs or strong gains, balance that with the more stocks that made new lows, or at least had declines greater than 1, 2, and 3%. The weakest stock in the S&P 100 today was Wells Fargo, and that declined 6%, followed up by AIG, that's insurance, uh, MetLife, same, Capital One, that's a finance, that's a bank. Think about all these, most of them at least, are bank or financial industry related stocks that are declining more than four percent that's really the top list right here so uh, here's your market those that were bearish we had declines in energy materials energy and financials so i can't remember a day that's been like this where it's been so dramatically different and we'll show other ways why that was the case and we'll jump into the market watch tab here in Thinkorswim. This is the S&P 500. So stocks that were positive, there were 320, let's say five, and about 175 were negative or advancing. So decliners were 326, advancing or positive was 176. Volume flowing into decliners was more than double that flow into advancers, but the S&P, well, if we call that positive, it's massively unchanged but it was up a little bit in the end of the day session. So how does that play? Capital flowing into advancing issues, that includes market cap and the weighting of the index, it was about equal. So capital flowing into the market versus capital flowing out of the market was relatively equal. That was not the case if we pull into the NASDAQ index. And we'll take a look at the NASDAQ composite which is the broad-based NASDAQ. Keeping in mind that it was up 1%, almost a percent and a half today. So we had, uh, in terms of the composite list, about 1,100 were positive and about 1,600 were negative. Volume into advancing issues was actually positive and the declining capital, two to one to the downside. So let's make sense of this. Where are we looking at what's, what's the point? The point is, Leading stocks of big cap market names, including NVIDIA, Amazon, Tesla, Facebook, Google, uh, PayPal's up there, not a huge market cap, Netflix, but Apple and Microsoft are. And again, we see these are the strongest names in today's session. In the S&P 500, this is where the split is made clearest because these are the stocks that are strongest and these big pocket of red are where the weakness was and the S&P split that difference, went down the middle, but over here at the Russell, because it is heavily influenced by financial energy and material stocks, we see that right here. Here is the financial sector, industrials and materials to an extent energy. That pulled the Russell small cap index starkly in the red. And that's why you have 1% decline versus 1% to the upside and the S&P right down the middle and that's the polarity of today's session. Other words you might have heard is a bifurcation, where money is flowing into the technology sector and out of the broader market. So taking us to the markets now, 
it wasn't just an equity the equity markets where things were interesting we'll come to that in a second but this is the s p or the spx this is the nasdaq which made a new all-time high and that's followed up by the q's which is triple q's as we load those there we are triple q's on the list there they are and that's a high but that's also in the xlk that's a technology sector in terms of sectors well the dow will skip over the dow but the russell continued its what we'll call dominant thesis sell-off or pullback or retracement or sell swing from 2350 and that's the dominant thesis puts were in play pullback was in play sell side activity was in play and that played us very well with the fed post announcement and this morning in the s p and especially the russell and again we can look at the financial sector which had a dramatic down day today down about three percent but the financials were not the biggest loser or decliner because that's that special treatment goes to the energy sector which is down about three and a half this is looking at the equity market and the split well let's take a look at crude oil which as part of the energy weakness came down as well so crude is just our futures contract we can look at other stocks such as exxon mobil chevron or the others and uh, crude did come down snapped the uptrend snapped the sessions of rallies and then made a logical as i like to call it rubber band snapback but wait there's more because gold fell this is the highlight if we haven't had enough to discuss in the video and in today's session gold was down about five percent and that's that's a big drop in the gold market you do not see gaps of this magnitude very often. They are present. They do exist. This is not the first time this has happened, but they are not common by any stretch of the imagination. And here we are. Gold has fallen. Again, that was a downside play. We were looking for downside activity in the gold market only because of the prevailing or ongoing downtrend. Did we know it's going to be this big? No, of course not. We don't know magnitudes of price movement or direction, just probability, but still. Coming down from 1900 after a stellar rally, gold has now been snapped. And that is if you're playing into the ETF or in options with GLD. And speaking of ETFs, let's look at TLT. On the flip side, we had a bullish surge or rally in the TLT. And that did again play to the upside. Mentioning this was a potential in the Tuesday video that if bonds start to rally, that could put pressure on equities. I guess to be specific, that puts pressure on financial equities, not so much technology. So there is a split. And part of that split is TNX. It's seen at least in the TNX. And the TNX again is the treasury yield on the 10 year treasury note from the US government. And that 17 or 16 or 15 refers to 1.7%. 1.6 or 1.5. So again, that downtrend or pull to the downside, retracement or lower activity in the bond yield should lead to lower prices in stocks. Once again, that is now to be put with a caveat. Lower interest rates are a good thing for technology stocks, not so much for financial stocks. And that's just in a 10-minute video team looking at these markets, the reaction and the little bit winning on one side, actually winning on both sides. The bulls had the technology sector. The bears had, I think, just about everything else. Maybe I'll put it the other way. The bulls only had the technology sector. Bears had everything else. And again, the play was to the downside. It, it wasn't easy, but uh, the market did respond outside the shining gem or the green sector of the market, uh, which does not affect the Russell as much, but it's technology. And again, the... the NASDAQ itself is heavily weighted with these monsters of tech, but the S&P has a smaller extent, is influenced by them, but clearly not as much. The NASDAQ does not really have sectors like this or weighting into the NASDAQ like this. And again, the Russell does. So as always, it never is more true in this moment. Be careful, be safe, guard your positions, have hedges if necessary, and know your risk in the positions because the market really is going different directions and it's going different directions within the market. And that leads to some dangerous and risky conditions. Be careful, be safe, be hedged. This is Corey Rosenblum with tonight's video update.
for June 17th, 2021.